Welcome to my laboratory. We're about to embark on a very scientific experiment. I've created brand new accounts on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And for the next 30 days, I'm going to be posting a short a day to each of those platforms. At the end of the 30 days, we're going to analyze all the data from all of these three different platforms and find out which one is the easiest to grow an audience on for a brand new creator. Now, these accounts are totally secret. I am not promoting them anywhere. I really just want to see organically which platform is going to push me out the most. Look at her. She has no idea what a long month of creating content she is in for, plus some big surprises when all of the data is revealed. So make sure you stick around to the end for that. The content I'm making is like very general, typical social media lifestyle content that would appeal to a broad female audience. So like styling, life hacks, beauty tips, things of that nature, you know what I mean. Very different from the content I create here on this channel. But there are going to be some ground rules. First of all, like I said, these accounts are secret. I'm not promoting them anywhere. I've enlisted the help of one friend, and we've agreed that when we come across this content in our normal social media activity, we're gonna watch it and we're gonna give it a like, maybe a comment, and that's it. I'm not telling anyone else about this. The other thing I'm going to do is not utilize any features from one platform that don't apply to another. For instance, on Instagram Reels, you can upload a song underneath your original audio on your video and hear both of those things. But on YouTube Shorts, you cannot do that. So all of these videos are going to be exactly the same. I'm not adding anything new to them within the respective platforms. I'm also not going to be hopping on any trends that are popular on any individual platform. I'm not going to be reacting to any videos that are popular on one individual platform. Everything's going to be original content and I'm going to upload it at about the same time every single day. I'm not entirely sure what to expect um, with this experiment. I am wondering if I'm going to get what I call love bombed when I first start posting content on each of these platforms. This is a theory that a lot of people have that when you first sign up for a platform and you post your first piece of content, it'll push it out to everybody to get you really excited about the number of views or maybe followers you got right at the beginning. And over time, things will kind of dwindle as you post more content. Um, I'm curious to see if that happens. And I'm curious as to what it's gonna feel like to be creating shorts content every single day for the next 30 days. It feels a little overwhelming. We'll see how it goes. I'm gonna be checking in with you guys about every week or so and maybe fine tuning my strategy a little bit. And at the end, we're gonna break down all the data and we're gonna learn a lot. I'm super excited. All right, here I go. Wish me luck. All right, I'm a week into this experiment, and what I'm noticing already is that I'm having a really hard time gaining traction on Instagram and TikTok. I think on Instagram, my reels are only being shown to like 100 or 200 people, and I think the reason for this is that I'm not interacting with other accounts on each of those platforms. TikTok and Instagram really are more social. They actually even ask to access your contacts when you set up your new account, and I declined to do that, and I also am not really engaging with any other accounts. So what I think I'm going to do is try to follow some other accounts that are creating the same type of content that I'm creating and see if that helps. I don't want to follow anyone that I actually know because the whole point of this experiment was just like which platform was going to push me out the most. Um, and so because I can't do that on YouTube, I don't want to do it on TikTok or Instagram either. So let's just see if that helps. Okay, we're at about the halfway point, and I would say so far I'm finding that YouTube definitely seems to be doing most of the heavy lifting for me in terms of pushing out this shorts content. I had my first like viral hit on TikTok the other day, which was kind of exciting. I got a video that got about 6,000 views and so many likes and saves, like a ton of engagement. But what I've noticed is it's really hard to convert these TikTok viewers into followers. It's just like, I don't know, like I can't get them to, to like want to see more of my content, even if they're liking and saving the content that I've put out. So I think I'm going to pivot a little bit on TikTok. I read that you shouldn't do many hashtags on TikTok. In fact, a lot of people are just doing the hashtag FYP for For You page and letting TikTok figure out who to show that video to. So I think I'm gonna try that. And I think I'm also gonna try to throw in a few mentions here and there because I also saw that mentions can help you grow on TikTok. Instagram is like a totally different story. I'm having 
such a hard time on Instagram. So I'm going to try to add a trending sound to my next few Instagram videos and see if that helps push the content out. I think that I need to get more into like the Instagram game. So I'm gonna try that and see how that goes. All right, so I have one week left in this experiment. I am getting a little bit burnt out to tell you the truth. Creating a video every day for 30 days is a lot, but I'm in the home stretch. I will say that the things that I did on Instagram to try to boost my content views doesn't really seem to be working. I've been adding uh, music from Instagram on my videos within the Instagram platform and it still doesn't seem to be making a difference, but we've got another week to go. Let's see how it goes. Okay, the 30 days is over and I have a lot of data, so many spreadsheets. Let's just dig right into it. First, let's talk about my process. I let each video go live for seven days before looking at the data and marking down how many views and engagements and follows came from that specific video. On Instagram and TikTok, it's a little bit harder to figure out when a new follower arrives, what video they came from, but I try to piece together, you know, if I saw someone like a video and then they followed me, I counted that follow toward that specific video. And I only looked at the content metrics for seven day windows so that the old content was not skewing the data of the new content over the course of the experiment. Now, engagements on each platform are a little bit different. On YouTube, I looked at how many comments, likes, or dislikes a video got. On Instagram and TikTok, I looked at comments, likes, and shares. YouTube doesn't give you the shares data, and TikTok and Instagram don't have dislike buttons, so that's what I went on for engagements. Let's first talk about how many subscribers I gained. YouTube definitely blew the other two away, although I would say in general, they were all pretty abysmal. Because YouTube tends to be more of like a one-way interaction between content creators and viewers, as opposed to TikTok and Instagram, which really push the more social component of those programs, I found that YouTube was more willing to push my content out to new people. Now you might remember that one of the predictions I had at the beginning of this was I thought maybe I would get love bomb. I actually found that not to be true at all. My first video on every platform really performed below average when I look back at the month. But what did happen that I did not expect was sometimes my video would get stuck. Somewhere along the gears of the algorithm on all three of these platforms, I might post a video that just never goes anywhere. Like for instance, this video of my cat swallowing a pill got almost 9,000 views in a week on YouTube, but only 10 views on TikTok. This video of me using a gua sha on YouTube only got 19 views far, far below all the other content on my channel. And then there was this video of me comparing makeup sponges on Instagram that got a measly five views that I figured out later was the day of the great Instagram outage of 2022 when so many people thought that their accounts had been suspended. In terms of the category of content that I was producing, I found that on YouTube, any videos about my hair did the best. On Instagram, food videos did the best, not really surprised there. And on TikTok, hacks did the best. In terms of the lengths of the videos, I couldn't really find any discernible trends that link length of video to performance. It really didn't seem to matter. It was more based on the content and the way the algorithm was feeling that day. Overall, here are my best performing videos on each of the platforms. And what about engagement? As you saw, I found engagement to be really hard across all of the platforms. Here are the engagement metrics across the platforms for the 30 days. In fact, I found engagement to be so hard that I posted this random video pretty much begging for engagement and even that didn't work on any of the platforms. Now, aside from these metrics, there really were some other big bombshells that I uncovered in YouTube analytics. Instagram and TikTok have terrible analytics. You can really not know almost anything about your viewers on those platforms. The performance metrics are horrible. They really, really, really need to step up their game. The only thing that YouTube is missing that I wish it had is I wish it told me how many shares a piece of content got. But other than that, YouTube is killing it 
in the analytics game. I can see how many people subscribed from each video in real time. I can see how long they watched a video for. All that data is missing from Instagram and TikTok. So the metrics I'm about to go over are really just from YouTube Shorts because that's all the information I could get. So as I showed you, my YouTube channel as a whole got 78,989 views with an average of 2,633 views per video. Only 3% of the viewers engaged and only 0.01% of those viewers subscribed. Now let's compare that to some of my long form content on my other channel, Jen Jagger Pro Tutorials. If you look at these three videos whose views almost total the same number of views I got on the Shorts channel, 5% of those viewers engaged and 3% of them subscribed. In real numbers, with almost the exact same number of views, only 113 people subscribed to the Shorts channel, but 2,216 people subscribed to my long form content. To me, that's absolutely mind blowing. And what's even more mind blowing is the discrepancy between the number of new viewers and returning viewers on each of these channels. You can see here on the long format channel, a lot of the same people keep coming back for more content, but I'm also getting new viewers as well, as opposed to the shorts channel where I'm getting a ton of new viewers, but people aren't returning. Check out that returning viewers metric right there. Only 33 returning viewers, even though I have over 100 subscribers and so many people have engaged with my content and I've posted 30 pieces of content. That's because people aren't going on YouTube when they're watching shorts and choosing what is served up to them. YouTube is just fire hosing whatever it wants at these people. So even if someone likes your content, that doesn't mean they're going to come across it again. Now, if you saw last week's video about how YouTube finally announced its qualifications for shorts monetization of a thousand subscribers, but 10 million views in 90 days, I'm not even in the ballpark. So I think it's gonna be really hard to monetize shorts unless you're really cranking them out more than once a day. But what about other forms of monetization? I thought about that too. In about 50% of the videos I posted on YouTube, I featured a product that could be purchased on Amazon. And I linked to that product with an affiliate link in both the description and a pinned comment under the video. How did that go? Here are the number of clicks I got on Amazon during that time frame. Now there are some clicks here, but you have to know that this is measuring all of my affiliate links across all of my channels. And if you compare this 30 day experiment window with the prior 30 days, you can see there's not really any difference. People don't click on links in descriptions and pinned comments on short content, just like they don't hit the like button or hit the subscribe button. It's really hard to get engagements. So affiliate marketing doesn't really work either for shorts content in my experience. So what are my takeaways from this whole big experiment? I have a lot of thoughts about it. First of all, I think it's really hard to grow a community with shorts content just because of the nature of shorts and the type of consumer that shorts attracts. You saw across all three platforms, I had a really hard time getting a community together, getting people to engage on my content, even if they watched it, even if they liked it, it was so hard to get them to follow me. So I think it's an uphill battle creating a community with shorts. And also because of this lack of engagement, I think it's going to be really hard to have alternative monetization methods on the shorts content, like let's say affiliate links, promoting products, stuff like that, because people, once they're on that scrolling reels, TikTok or shorts platform, they don't wanna click away from it. It's almost like addictive to them to stay on it. And they aren't choosing what is being served up next, the platform is choosing. The other thing I've noticed is that it's not just addictive for the viewers, I feel like it's addictive as the creator. There's nothing more satisfying than refreshing the metrics on a video and watching the view count skyrocket over the course of an hour or two hours. It can be really satisfying and a bit of a high. You saw how excited I was when I finally had like a TikTok hit, like a, a moderate TikTok hit, you know? So I definitely think there's an emotional component to this one as well. So in terms of all three of these platforms, clearly YouTube was the easiest to grow an audience on, even though it's still very much an uphill battle. If you don't want to be a slave to TikTok or a slave to Instagram, but you do want to create shorts content, I do think YouTube is the way to go. 
But that's just my opinion. You guys, what do you think? Which one of these is your favorite platform? Which one have you had the greatest success on? I'm only one channel making 30 days of content. You know, this is not a huge experiment, but I can't wait to hear what you have to say about it. Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you again.